Go to watchstadium.com and click where to watch. Stadium, welcome to the game. Welcome to the Barclays Center Classic presented by Continental Tire, a top 25 showdown in Brooklyn between the 6-0 Minnesota Golden Gophers and the 5-0 Alabama Crimson Tide. Thank you for joining us for Stadium's coverage of college basketball exclusively on Facebook. With former Northwestern great Tim Doyle, I'm Chris Hassel. Kristen Balboni is here as well. I, I know it's it's November, right? But this in a neutral setting between two really good teams kind of feels like a sweet 16 showdown, doesn't it? Well, I think it's the best game all day in college basketball, and Minnesota's a team that I think is flying below the radar on a national scale. I think they could go out there and really make some noise, get to a Final Four, and if you like fun, you like exciting, Alabama's got one of the most exciting players in all of college basketball. Colin Sexton is must-see an outstanding freshman for the Christian side. What do you think the key to winning this game is for well, both these teams? Yeah, I think Alabama's going to shoot the ball well from the outside because it's so hard to drive against Murphy and Lynch when they're able to protect the paint. So guys like Petty are going to have to spread the defense out and open up those driving lanes. If I'm Minnesota, you got to go inside. I think that's going to be their strength. No one's been able to guard Murphy in college basketball. He's averaging a double-double this year. So I think that's going to end up being the difference in the game. I give a slight edge to the Gophers, but hey, that's why we play the 40 minutes, Chris. Right. Looking forward to these 40 minutes. I, I wouldn't be upset if it goes 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. Alabama beat BYU yesterday behind a balanced effort. John Petty led the way with 16 points, but four players in double figures. Yeah, I thought Hall gave them tremendous effort, blocking shots and all over the court. You see those nine rebounds. Ingram's a guy who's a fabulous slasher, and you see Hall using that athleticism. That's going to be matched in this game by guys like Reggie Lynch as well as Jordan Murphy. I think both these teams kind of mirror each other with the athleticism, but all night long, Alabama used that physicality to just bully BYU time and time again. Got whatever they wanted on the offensive end, but you like exciting teams. Alabama likes to play fast. They like to shoot the three, and they're going to have to today if they're going to pull off the so-called upset against the Gophers. Jordan Murphy has been one of the best players in college basketball to this point. The back-to-back -back Big Ten Player of the Week had 16 points yesterday in the win over UMass. Yeah, and just has a tremendous motor and a nose for the basketball. He's undersized at six foot six and playing the power four but he can still get in the lane. He's got great touch. He's not an outstanding outside shooter, but he's got a great pep in his step, and you can see him rise above. He reminds me a lot of Draymond Green. He's got a great feel for the game, and as that shooting comes along, he is going to be unstoppable for the Gophers. Look at the starting fives for both teams in this game, and Minnesota's starting five might be the best in the country. I don't think that's a stretch. You know, we haven't talked about Nate Mason. Oh, by the way, he was first team all Big Ten last year. Amir Coffey may be their most talented player. He was all freshman as a, a freshman up in the Twin Cities. And Herb Jones, I really like for Alabama. He could do so many different things. Really their glue guy for Avery Johnson's crew. Jones has really been making waves on the defensive end. Had four charges a couple games ago against UT Arlington and had a few more yesterday in the win over BYU. Fans are getting into it. They're excited. They're ready to go. So are the head coaches. Richard Patino, the son of Rick Patino, making a name of his own. Fifth season at Minnesota. Had a school record 23 wins last season. He was Big Ten Coach of the Year. And he talked about struggling in 2015, 2016. They went 8 and 23, but last year got back to the tournament. Some would say an unlucky draw. They saw Middle Tennessee, who had an outstanding veteran squad. They got knocked off in the first round. But I believe this Minnesota Golden Gophers team has final four written all over them. Well, what about Avery Johnson's team? Avery in his third season there at Alabama, former NBA Coach of the Year in 2006 
with the Dallas Mavericks, and he's got the Alabama program on the rise into the top 25 and could make a big jump if they get this win today. Uh, it's an exciting time to be an Alabama sports fan. Obviously, Nick Saban's got things going in the right direction on the gridiron, but you look at this roster, and with the exception of Hall, all I see is freshmen and sophomores. So this is a group you know, who knows how long Sexton's going to be in Tuscaloosa, but Ingram and Petty and Jones, they're going to play some valuable roles as this certainly is a tournament team. And when you look at Kentucky struggles in Florida, I think Alabama is going to be amongst the upper echelon in the SEC. Well, they're picked fourth, and Kentucky, as usual, picked to win it. How about Florida with the big win? last night and some are saying now maybe Florida's the favorite hey Alabama has its chance to throw its hat into the ring with a big win today against Minnesota we thank you for joining us here as stadium brings you college basketball exclusively on Facebook we're at the Barclays Center a little bit different than yesterday Tim when we were over at the Steinberg Wellness Center on the campus of LIU Brooklyn we are going to bring you starting lineups right here live on Facebook the center, a six ten Richard Senior from Adina, Minnesota. Number twenty two, Reggie Lynch. At guard, a six five junior from Queens, New York. Number one, Dupree McGrayer. At guard, a six two senior from Decatur, Georgia. Number two, Nate Mason. And finally at guard, a 6'8 sophomore from Hopkins, Minnesota. Number five, Amir Coffey. The head coach in his fifth season is Richard Vincino. And now, the starting lineup for the Alabama Crimson Tide. At forward, a 6'9 junior from Luburn, Alabama, zero, Dante Hall. At forward, a 6'11 sophomore from Mapleton, Georgia, number four, Daniel Gaines. At guard, a 6'7 freshman from Greensboro, Alabama, number 10, Herbert Jones. At guard, a 6'5 freshman from John Petty. And finally, at guard, a 6'3 freshman from Babelton, Georgia. Number two, Colin Saxon. The head coach in his third season is Avery Johnson. We are ready to go here at the Barclays Center. Before we do, send it to the third member of our crew, Kristen Balboni. And Rick Pitino here watching his son. I know Richard's got a lot of family here, and he said it really means a lot to have them here supporting him. And guys, we know these are two very passionate fan bases, Minnesota and Alabama. So we want to hear from you. You're a part of this broadcast. We want to see your pictures on Instagram and Facebook. Let us know how those double setups are going. Use the hashtag Min versus Bama. All right, Kristen, you see the hashtag in the upper right-hand portion yep. of your screen. Use that and correspond with us all throughout the game, all throughout the evening. Thanks for joining us on a very exciting day for both of the fan bases. Minnesota taking on Wisconsin, the big rivalry football game. And of course, the Iron Bowl for Alabama fans against Auburn. This is what we've been waiting for, Tim Doyle. That's the best college basketball game being played across the country, and you can only watch it here on Facebook. Minnesota wins the opening tip. Nate Mason, one of the best point guards in the country, leading the way for the Golden Gophers. Inside of Reggie Lynch, the bounce. Murphy draws the foul. Jordan Murphy to the line where he's 70% on the season. He just has such a tremendous feel for the game. And Good catch in traffic, and he's able to get Giddens in the air and get to the free throw line. He's kind of a throwback player where 
He does a little bit of everything. Excellent rebounder. He's unselfish. Now that's a quick hook early for Avery Johnson. Herb Jones subs out of the game. Just talking about how great Jones has been on the defensive end. He'll bring in Dazon Ingram to replace Herb Jones. 2 0 Minnesota after the free throws. Check out this awesome collection of Alabama freshmen. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I've probably watched 3,000 basketball games. You were never yanked that early? First possession of the game? No, I've never seen that before. Mason, a pull up three. Got it. Five nothing Gophers. Minnesota running and gunning again. Jordan Murphy! I said this could be a Final Four team. Am I crazy, Chris Hassel? No, you're not crazy. Minnesota's going to be in the top ten if it wins this game today. Ingram left his feet. Blocked by the backboard, and here come the Gophers again. Amir Coffey, the Euro step, and it'll stay with Minnesota. Yeah, he might have stepped to Croatia there, but out in transition, <laughs> Murphy, watch ahead. I call that the uh, Euro Asia step from Amir Coffey. Not called. <laughs> We're in an NBA arena. Dupree McBrayer, too strong. Ingram taking it inside right at Lynch. Can't get the roll. Tipped out of bounds by Mason. And Alabama gets it. They got a chance to talk to Richard Bettino before the game. Their number one concern, you know, obviously short turnaround, getting back on defense. They must make Alabama a half-court team. That's when the Crimson Tide are at their best, when they're pushing pace. Ingram stumbles. Puts it out to Colin Sexton. Came into this tournament leading the SEC in scoring. There's the Ohio State transfer, Giddens, who walks. You know, the problem with playing so many young guys like Avery Johnson is doing is, all right, who's going to calm this squad down? Sexton's obviously their best player, but when things get rough, who's going to stop the bleeding and say, all right, everyone just relax and go get an important bucket right now, Alabama and disarray? 7-0 Minnesota. Two minutes gone by. Mason thought about it. Murphy travels. Checking in for Alabama, number three, Alex Reese. I saw Richard Bettino before the game. He had just the golf shirt on. Made the adjustment to the pullover. Yeah, he pulled it over over top the golf shirt. He was cold. A little cash. Flat out told me he was cold. Avery Johnson going with the short sleeves. There is an ice hockey rink underneath here as Colin Sexton knocks that down. Of course, the Islanders play here now as well. I think for Alabama to win this game, Sexton has to be somewhere north of 24 points. Came into this game averaging over 20 a game. Lynch bodying inside. Murphy, the offensive rebound, straight up, blocked by Hall, got it back, and third time's a charge. He just has that dog in him, where he tries to grab every rebound, block every shot, and he seems to never get tired. Just an outstanding motor, and there he is with the steal. To the deck, and they get him for a travel, because he was scooting around on his fanny. By the way, if you want to hide the comments, folks, swipe right. That's how you hide everything, get the uh, crystal clear screen. Excellent hustle here by Jordan Murphy, just staying with it. He's got great touch down low. You know, I gave my top 20 players in college basketball on the rally show. Check that out. Six, 11, and one Eastern every night on stadium. And I did not have him as one of my top 20 players. I made a mistake. Good plug. You get to redo that. Hey, it's 
That's a block for Lynch, and here comes Coffey. Minnesota's got the numbers. Coffey the bounce, and Mason had it stripped. They get a foul on Colin Sexton. This is what makes life so difficult. He leads the country in block shots. Reggie Lynch over five a game. And that what I thought was going to be the difference in the game was the interior presence of Murphy and Lynch. And so far, both guys are making their presence felt. Only had two blocks yesterday. Mason knocks down the first. Mason, a guy out of Decatur, Georgia, a senior now. First team all Big Ten last season. One of 50 on the preseason Naismith watch list. He says he doesn't play with a chip on his shoulder, Tim. Plays with a boulder on his shoulder. You think that's funny? I think it's interesting. Sounds like a t-shirt. If you're Alabama right now, I want Sexton trying to make something happen. Get a ball screen. There it is. Great defense from Lynch as he swats it out of bounds. Already his second block of the game. You're right, Tim. These big men inside wreaking havoc early for the Gophers. What makes it so difficult to play against is you can't simulate that in practice. You can talk about it. You can prepare for it. But when you go up against a guy like Reggie Lynch, he can affect the game in so many different ways. You're going to have to make some of those. Alex Reese misses. Gophers looking to go up double digits in the first four minutes of this game. Coffee splitting inside the dish and dunk from Jordan Murphy. But they wave it off. It's a charge. What do you think of the call? Got to see the replay. Obviously the hardest call in all of basketball. The arc there has made it easier for officials. And I think that's a good call. It looked like Smith was outside the arc. You leave your feet like coffee does. You put yourself in a bad situation. Maybe that's what jump starts Alabama here because it's been all golden gophers at the start. 11 to two. Back into the game is Herb Jones, who was taken out of the opening possession when he picked up a foul. Ingram cut off and traveled. And Reggie Lynch forced it. Well, see what kind of adjustments Avery Johnson makes after this opening salvo from Minnesota. 11-2, Golden Gophers over to Kristen Balboni. Yeah, guys, talking about Avery Johnson. He has been roaming up and down in front of the bench, trying to fire his players up. And he certainly knows this arena well. I was talking to him a couple of days ago, and he said it is his first time being back here since he coached the Nets. That was back in December 2012 was his last time here. He said he's really excited to be back, and you could tell that he didn't just say that. He really meant it. He was talking about some of the remodeling that they've done earlier today. There were uh, workers from Barclays coming out and putting them decals out on the court. They came over to him. They said, hey, coach, how you doing? Uh, you can tell he's got a lot of love for this place, and we know that he would like to come out with a win here today. Tim, Chris. Kristen, thanks. In interesting context. Back in the house that he helped open up here in Brooklyn. Seven seasons in the NBA, 2006 Coach of the Year, of course. As a player, he was an NBA champion in 1999 with the Spurs. shoot around in an empty arena. People here happy to have him back in Brooklyn. Yesterday at the Steinberg Wellness Center that holds 2,500. We're here at the home of the Nets and Islanders. Big NBA arena for a big time matchup. And it's all Minnesota early. We got to clear out of here right after the game for JC. Now we see Matt on Facebook chiming in. Not a great day for Alabama sports so far. Auburn 10 7 lead at halftime of the Iron Bowl. And here comes the title to slow stop. But it's fast if you're a Gopher fan. Jordan Murphy, another stuff. Amazing. 
Sexton trying to create something. Another freshman Jones, and that is an ill-advised pass inside. Another turnover for Alabama. Here comes Minnesota, up 11. Mason three ball, no good over the back. Take another look at that alley -oop. Yeah, out of a timeout, this is a set play. You see Murphy there, he's able to get to the corner. Great execution against the zone. Now Avery Johnson's trying to, a few different looks right over the top, and guess who? He's already been named Big Ten Player of the Week, not once, but twice, and the Gophers are off to a 13-2 start. First player in Gopher history to do that. At three off the mark. Ping ponged around. And battle count plus the foul. Galen Smith. Another freshman from Clinton, Mississippi. He did not play last game. Maybe he'll play a big part in this one. A great energy there from the freshman. And Lynch was out in the perimeter challenging the shot. And the 6'9 freshman from Mississippi, the second rated player in the state of Mississippi last year in high school, trying to give a little bit of a spark to this Crimson Tide team. Interesting that he hasn't played much this season, didn't play at all last game, but against these big body Gophers, they're going to need him. I think that's spot on, Chris, and I think that's why he gets the call, because I think the Gophers have been flat out bullying Alabama so far, and Smith comes in and throws that muscle around. Thirteen five. Coffee the bounce inside to Murphy, and Murphy's fouled. Jordan Murphy so active early, eight points, three rebounds, already a couple of blocks. Jordan Murphy has made one three-pointer this year. Right, that is not a strength of his. It's actually probably his biggest weakness. We saw that three-pointer yesterday. That's right. Banged it home against UMass. If he learns how to shoot the three. He will make hundreds of millions of dollars in the NBA because he has such a wonderful feel for the game. But if you can't shoot and be a reliable shooter, it's hard for you to play. At the college level, he's exceptional because he's such a great athlete. But I think he could be a very unique talent at the next level. And he reminds me so much of Draymond Green. Now, he's a junior. You worried that he might not be? coming back for a senior season? That's, that's a great question, because I think NBA scouts are drooling over the potential that he has. Oh, another block from Lynch. Coffee lost the handle a bit, may have carried it, but they don't call it. Washington out of Harlem, and the freshman scores at home, and he's got a big contingent right behind us. Minnesota up a dozen. Herb Jones baseline cut off. And a reach-in foul will be called on Minnesota. Uh, guess who? Lynch affecting the game. Let's see if Coffee Trout uh, uh, pops this ball. Uh, we got away from it and then Washington. We got a gopher fan cutting the cutting the replays. Cut that little carry out. I think it should have been called. <laughs> I thought he carried the ball as well. Murphy ties him up, but before that, it's a travel. Yeah, guess who was in the right place at the right time? You know, and you see Draymond Green, he kind of fulfills that role for, in my eyes, the best team in the NBA, the Golden State Warriors. I love this Minnesota squad because they're not predictable. Lynch can affect the game in so many different ways. Murphy, Coffee, Mason. Breyer's a guy who can go out there and get buckets, and then you bring Washington in as that spark plug off the bench. Five turnovers in the first four and a half minutes for Alabama. Again, the friendly hometown bounce for the freshman Isaiah Washington. Mr. Basketball in New York last year out of Harlem. Was that a jelly? Avery Johnson Jr. The slick little finger roll. Mason drives it to the hoop. No good. The defense from Galen Smith. Here comes John Petty. A three from Norris is short. 
Coffey, one on one, spin move, can't get it to go. Avery Johnson Jr. out of there with it. And he lost it. Washington's got it ahead of the pack. Isaiah Washington has six. And he might have 6,000 fans in attendance. We talk about that sweet finger roll, the jelly. And his eyes were as big as basketballs. And this is a kid who is a playground legend here in New York. And watch the spin. That's the little jelly off the glass. A little, a little spin on the finger roll from Isaiah Washington. 21-7 Minnesota on a big football day for both of these two programs with a two-touchdown lead over Alabama, Kristen. Yeah, guys. Well, I had a chance to sit down with both coaches here, and uh, I asked them how they are managing their programs and all the high expectations. We have talked a lot about human nature. Uh, we've talked more about human nature than defense, offense, rebounding. Um, we are constantly talking about the elements that you deal with. You know, as you get older, you, you, you realize, like, you know, you're tired one day. you got to motivate yourself to get up. That's normal. It's human nature. Young people don't want to do that. Uh, so we've talked about everything that goes with expectations. They want to be ranked. They want to be talked about. They want Instagram, Twitter. They want all those things. You can't fight that part of it. Uh, you've got to embrace it. But then you've got to understand, well, if you want to stay relevant, these are the things that you need to do in order to win and get better. We're only thinking about that one minute in practice where I, I have to be at my best in terms of my competitive spirit, caring about my teammates, the way we communicate, uh, the way we bounce back from failure, the way we handle success. So every minute in practice, and then that's going to lead to you know, the next minute and the next play. And that's what we talk about. We don't look at the season in its entirety or where we're ranked or not ranked. We're, we have a single purpose, and we think if we can just stay in the moment, uh, everything else will take care of itself. Avery Johnson has this team in the top 25 in his third season. Still the single season record holder for assists per game in the NCAA. Averaged 12 assists a game when he played. He's got Alabama off to its best start in five seasons and ranked for the first time in six years. Rough start to this one, though. We'll see how they respond. This is his son, Avery Johnson Jr. 13 on the shot clock. Giddens looking to set a screen up high. Minnesota defense extends. Norris the bounce. Giddens out to Norris. The senior hits the three. Good offense there for Alabama. We talked about in the earlier game. Shooters love catching that ball when you're able to go inside now because when they're shooting by themselves in the gym, think about it, the rebounders always throwing it out to them. So there's that comfort level of catching out on the perimeter with that pass coming from the inside. Eight on the shot clock. Nate Mason calling out a play. Has Washington. The buzzer, no good. Alabama a chance to string some buckets together here. Ingram going right on Washington, gets it swatted by Murphy. Murphy finds his point guard, Mason. Mason to the hoop. No, Murphy, offensive rebound. Got it. If loving Jordan Murphy is wrong, I don't want to be right. Dozen points already. Petty gets fouled on the floor. He is just everywhere on every play defensively in the right spot. Gets the steal, gives it up to his point guard, runs the floor. Might have been a foul there. Still. Wins a 50-50 battle, and then he has such great soft touch around the rim. And this guy is tremendous. 21 on the shot clock for Alabama. Here's Colin Sexton. Oh, boy, he ran into a brick wall. But he's going to get to the free throw line. They get the foul on Bakari Kanade. Bakari saying, look, I'm straight up. He just ran right into me. Bakari Kanate, his first, team's fifth. 
So free throws coming for Sexton, averaging 22 points a game, 64 percent from the free throw line. Just 18 years old. Consensus top 10 player nationally. We send it over to Kristen. Yeah, guys, we want to see those double setups. We got two good football games for both of these programs going on right now. Hashtag Min versus Bama. Send us pictures on your Facebook or on your Instagram of how you're watching this game. We're going to show them in the broadcast. It's been all Wisconsin in the game of the Twin Cities, 17 nothing. Wisconsin, Alabama now has a lead on Auburn, 14 to 10 in the third. Down by 12. Michael Hurt in the game for Minnesota. Washington tries to split the double team and turns it over. Here comes Sexton. Gets around Kanade. Sexton all the way. The finger roll. He has such a tremendous gear when he's out in the open floor. And almost Russell Westbrook like the way he attacks the rim. The last couple of possessions for Alabama have been very good defensively, and now the turnover for the Gophers. Momentum starting to shift a little bit to Avery Johnson's crew. Offensive foul. And they get Devontae Fitzgerald, the redshirt senior from Atlanta, who was at Texas A&M, transferred over. Ten-point game. Minnesota's led by as many as 14. Sexton. Stutter step out to Norris. Washington, quick step, step back. Offensive rebound to Reggie Lynch. Takes it right back up. No, Hurt got his hand on it. Lynch has it again. Got it. Gopher has just been relentless on the backboards, and Lynch has been a difference maker on both ends of the floor. Blocking shots, intimidating others. If Alabama's going to win this game, they're going to have to make 10 plus threes. They're getting not rebounded 15 to 8 by the Crimson Tide. Shot clock under 10. Sexton from 19, way off. Mason out to Fitzgerald. He'll take that. And Giddens lets it go out of bounds to Alabama. Get into a Petty. Get into a Petty. Second in for Minnesota. Number one, two, three, McBrayer. Herb Jones is in. Giddens, Norris take a seat. Avery Johnson is back out on the floor as well, replacing John Petty, who hasn't done much of anything in this game. Petty, the reigning freshman of the week in the SEC. The Minnesota coaching staff told me that they want to force Colin Sexton left. They want to get him away from his strong hand, his dominant hand. Jones short, Avery Johnson the rebound. He's going to box him out. One of the smallest guys on the court getting a second opportunity for the Crimson Tide. He takes it in and gets it blocked, but a foul before the block. It's going on Fitzgerald picks up number two. Well, Alabama's had some success dribble penetrating. Problem is Reggie Lynch is waiting there for you. So you're able to get in the lane. Now you got to find the shooter here. Now fortunate enough you're able to get to the free throw line. But for Alabama to win this game, they're going to have to go out there and bury some perimeter jump shots. Free throw no good. Alabama struggled from the line so far this season, 57%. Jordan Murphy comes back in. What are they shooting from the field as a team? 54%. Almost as good from the field as the free throw line. I knew that. I was just testing you, Chris. <laughs> Not shooting it that well from the field in this game, though. 25%. It was 5 of 20 to start this game. Murphy's got it, seven on the shot clock, takes the three. Second made three of the season. That's what you said you want him to do to make hundreds of millions of bucks in the NBA. Jones dishes, 
And Hall is short. You know, Murphy actually got beat on that play defensively, and then a quick switch between him and Lynch just does so many different things well. He starts burying that three. This might be his last year up in Minneapolis. Mason, high teardrop, and everything's falling for the Golden Gophers, who are up 30 to 13. Yeah, but they're not playing like out of this world. They're shooting less than 50%. They're just playing their game. This team has Final Four written all over it. They're that good, they're that talented. Sexton the jump pass, Jones the pump fake, gets bumped and Murphy is called for the foul. Just the first on Murphy, but Alabama will be shooting one and one when play resumes. 30 to 13, Minnesota all over the Crimson Tide on a big day for the basketball and the football programs. Kristen? Yeah, well, ask and you shall receive. That's the beauty of being broadcast on Facebook and having Instagram. We asked to, for you to send us your pictures of the double setup using the hashtag Min versus Bama. And this is what we got. First from a Bama fan. I like that setup. That's nice. Then we've got a Minnesota fan. Here we go. Very nice. Again, hashtag Min versus Bama. And another Minnesota fan here. Uh, Tim Chris, I like these setups. I think these people are doing it right I do too and I think uh, I've noticed a lot of them are, are laptops and I've actually I've experimented with the with the phone with the tablet with the laptop I actually like watching these games on Facebook more on the laptop because you get a, a big TV screen right for the stream and then you get a little column for the comments as well when I'm watching on a phone if I really want to watch the game I'm swiping right right I'm getting those comments out of there on, on, a, on a small screen but on a laptop, you can have the whole shebang. Well, I'll erase James's comment right there. He said these announcers are the worst. We appreciate you chiming in. Use that hashtag Min vs. Bama. I like that one too. Of course, you don't have to know that much to know how to get the stream onto your big screen TV as well. So if you have the TVs, certainly. Just feed that puppy right into your TV and get this up on the big screen. Beautiful HD. Minnesota fans are loving it. Parker Jones is the line for Alabama. One and one. One and one for Herb Jones. Rattles that home. Alabama 5 of 21 from the floor, 1 of 6 shooting threes. They're being out-rebounded 18 to 10. Not at all surprising, Tim, I know to you, because you basically called this. I, I'd be a little bit embarrassed if I'm our statistician, Mark, called an Alabama blowout in this game. We all have our strengths, Mark. Yeah, Alabama's going 2-3 zone here. I think Avery Johnson just trying to mix up defenses to somehow stop this go for team you got to get your hands up when you're in a zone you can't be lazy and for young guys it's easier said than done look at the spin murphy couldn't get it to go he was five for six before that miss sex to the pass ingram the flush we talked about getting back in transition of your go for there, a breakdown, and maybe that's able to give Alabama a little shot of life. They're going to stick in this 2-3 zone. Got to have active hands. Lynch fouled before that one was rejected. Question is, if it was a shooting foul, then you have to start thinking, is that goaltending? Alabama foul called against But they're not going to call that goaltending. They are going to give it two free throws, though. Reggie Lynch, two shots for the Golden Gophers. Reggie Lynch said he is he's walking around campus last year and in the offseason. People would come up to him and say, hey, man, love the way you play, but can you please just work on not fouling out as much? He fouled out eight times last season. And with this Gopher team, that might be the thing that could kick them out early in the tournament and we're looking way down the road if he goes out then what do you have i believe that's their achilles heel 
that is going to be their weakness. Is if Lynch comes out of the game, what do you do? You go Murphy and Fitzgerald. You move Murphy to the five. It just really puts them in a bad spot. And there he is with the steal because he's such a difference maker on the defensive end. Bad decision by Jones to leave his feet. Reggie Lynch is second all time in Illinois State history. The college that is in blocks. He's a transfer. <laughs> That's amazing. Spent two years playing for the Redbirds. Five on the shot clock. Washington one-on-one -on -one with Sexton to step back. Oh, they called him for the travel there. He doesn't like the call. I'm a bit surprised they called it. Yeah, I mean, I remember Skip to my Lou, Ray for Alston, and he always had these creative moves. Watch his footwork. Look, it is a travel in college. It, it's that, that's no not fun. a travel. It's a travel in college. It's, it's not a travel I, in the NBA. I remember them, they used to call that on, I call him Skip, Ray for Alston, all the time. He was so creative with the basketball. I think sometimes he would fool the referees. That's a good position. That's the best position I've seen an Alabama big man have all game long. Dante Hall. Now, I've watched the Alabama guards almost shy away, Chris, from throwing the ball down low because they really had nothing going. you got to stay consistent. Hall and Giddens gave them some solid minutes yesterday against BYU. McGrayer finds the wide open Washington, but he's in amongst the big men. Coffee the three, and that's strong. Oh, look at the rebound from Murphy. The spin. No. Tips it again. Lynch has it, and he's fouled. Now the biggest concern coming into this game was Colin Sexton. You see them forcing him left once again. The double team a little late. A good drop off to Hall. But that's something to watch out for on this broadcast. They're going to force the sensational freshman to his offhand. You see him number two in white. McDonald's All-American. He won the slam dunk contest at only six foot three. And he is an amazing talent, and he garners a lot of attention from the defense. Dupree McBrayer. They're going to get Riley Norris for that foul there. Murphy hit the floor, and the officials both looked at each other. Officiating crew of Rick Crawford, Brian O'Connell, and Brett Smith. We got a T on Avery Johnson right here. Uh, he's not happy with the call. He's better watch himself. Because the official originally signaled going the other way, like Alabama ball. He made a mistake. Got corrected. Gave Minnesota the ball, and Avery Johnson just went irate on the sidelines. Things have not gone according to plan for Avery Johnson so far in this game. Minnesota has been the better team. Minnesota's led by double digits most of this game. That was tough. Uh, watch the bottom of your screen. It's Murphy. Uh, Norris did and have Norris. the arm wrapped around Murphy's shoulder. And Murphy was the one that hit the floor. And this is where they teed him up. You see Brian McConnell there trying to settle down Avery Johnson, but he's hot right now. His team is struggling. Clearly that wasn't where they teed him up because he was just saying, okay, okay. Yeah, it was originally pointed Alabama basketball. It was a mistake by the officials. They're taking a look at it right now. It's your bottom official, lower left. He's the one who signaled the call. I get it's two guys fighting for position there. I honestly think that is a foul on, on Riley Norris. So watch the referee under the basket. Now Murphy was just. He signals and watch his hand. See, right. he's pointing towards Alabama. And that's why Avery Johnson was so upset. Officials looking to sort this thing out because there's, I mean, it's a loose ball foul and everything else. Nate Mason is going to attempt the technical free throw. He'll get two. 14 of 17 on the season.
So it is what we thought a foul on Riley Norris a regular foul and then the technical on Avery Johnson. They took a look at it I believe just to see if there was any kind of flagrant elbows flying around anything like that. There wasn't. I think in the end on the foul the officials got that as right as they could. I don't know if what Avery Johnson did warranted a technical. That'll count. Jordan Murphy is having himself a month. 17 points and nine rebounds already in the first half. He just has an old man like feel to the game where it's never moving too fast. He always is in the right position. And right now he's a man amongst boys. Now he is basically bullying Alabama in every sense of the word. A double double in every game this season. That's going to continue. Sexton around it out. You see that left handed dribble. That's what Minnesota wants. They want him doing everything with his offhand. Collins so good when he's able to turn the corner with his strong dominant hand, his right hand. Alabama's got to be careful not to let this thing get too far away. Good defense there by Sexton. McBrayer, oh, he rose to the rim. No foul is called. Sexton traveled. He's got to shoot that ball. I know he's struggling offensively right now. The Crimson Tide team is, but that's a good look in the corner in transition. A rhythm shot. The freshman seems out of sorts. Already another double-double for Jordan Murphy. 17 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double in every game this season. Kristen? Yeah, guys, we've been talking a lot about Kevin uh, Reggie Lynch, and I just almost tripped over my words because I'm so excited to tell you about his uncle, Kevin, who was uh, also played at Minnesota and was, let me get this right here, the first pick in the second round of the 1991 NBA draft. Now, Uncle Kevin lives in the Twin Cities. He is an analyst for basketball, and he and Reggie are close. I imagine that he's very proud of Reggie's play here today. And, guys, look at some of these old basketball cards. I got to say, that is a great hairstyle from Uncle Kev right there. I think the jersey's better than the hairstyle. I love those old Charlotte Very 90s. Uniforms. Very 90s. Great hair in that family, I would say. Business in the front. Yeah. Party in the back. Party in the back. In the back. Tim, you got an explanation from one of the officials? Yeah, they were looking to see if that was a, a flagrant between Norris and Murphy. He got the call right. I, I asked the official straight up. I said, why do you think you teed him up? Because I, I get Avery Johnson's frustration in that call. And he right. said he came on the court, crossed the line. You know, it, it's a difficult call, but I, I think the official let him say his piece for a little bit, and then Avery kind of said the magic word. And there's a few magic words you can't say to officials. I think he's frustrated. Alabama's frustrated. But still, not out of the woods yet. Down 17, and when you're shooting only 29% from the field, 7 of 24 against a team that's going to be in the top 10 if they win this game. you got to see if you can close this gap somehow, some way. If you can get this to 10 at halftime, give yourself a chance. Alabama averaging 84 points a game this season. Here comes Sexton. The freshman lays it in. Fifteen-point game, three minutes to go. You know, when I would be in timeouts, I loved when the coach would say, "Hey, we're down right now, which was often at Northwestern. Let's try to close this gap. Let's try to get it to ten. Let's try to get it to single digits." And that's what Alabama's got to try to do. McRae no. Murphy goes up high for the rebound. Out to Mason for three, short. And now a whistle away from the ball. Yeah, this That's last on Ingram, Tim. This last possession is not going to go up in Springfield. Oh boy, yikes! Two guys running into each other, and then Sexton, right time, right place for the freshman sensation. Lynch at the free throw line after the foul on Dazon Ingram, one and one. It's the roll on the first. Brayer has a bloody lip after that collision. 
He's a hometown kid as well from Queens. Returning for the goal number Minnesota 12 of 13 from the free throw line. A lot of standing around right now for Alabama on offense. Eddie lost it on the way up. It's batted around and Mason has it. Wanted to throw it ahead to Lynch. Held it back for Coffee and Coffee threw it inside and into traffic. Ingram all the way. The timeout is called by Richard Pitino. Not happy with Amir Coffee who points to his jersey, says that's my bad. Minnesota 30. 15-point lead, though, for the Golden Gophers, who are fixing to move into the top 10 if this score holds. Kristen? Guys, we got more Instagrams rolling in. Take a look at this. Like we said, we want you to keep using that hashtag. Let's see that double setup, hashtag men versus Bama. Oh, this guy's going phone. Okay, that's nice. He's got a nice blanket. We got the double setup here. I like it. We got a triple setup right here. Three games, guys. I didn't expect that. Oh, all three. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Auburn, Alabama, and ours. Now that's nice. Uh, that guy could use some lights, though. Let's let's get the lights uh, going. I don't know. I like the darkness. You like the darkness? Okay. That says a lot. Good stuff. Keep sending in those pictures and the comments. Auburn has taken a lead on Alabama, 20 to 14, late in the third. Minnesota losing 31 nothing to Wisconsin. Coffee bailed out on that call. Kind of hung in the air for a little while and drew the foul. Yeah, it was interesting you say that, Chris. It almost looked like when he jumped, he was just looking for another body to bump into. You know what I mean? Like he jumped with no intention of scoring. He went, oh no, I'm not going to make this. Let me find somebody and really went out and sorted out the contact himself and was able to get to the free throw line. Coffee under 60% at the line. Watch Sexton, see everything's going left. That's the only success he's had is go left and look for Dante Hall. That's the second time we've seen that inside. Well, I, I think that's going to be the recipe for Avery Johnson. Keep getting him in that pick and roll situation. Let him go out there and make a play. So talented, Sexton, great pass there. Mason, the dish, Murphy, bodies in, gets it blocked from behind, but he just keeps coming. Misses one, no problem. I'll get it back and I'll score it the second time. He has 19 points and 11 rebounds. Ingram nearly walked. This is not a video game, folks. This is real life. This is college basketball. It's two top 25 teams, and Jordan Murphy's just dominating. Sexton able to get to that strong hand. It's so good going to his right. Not and here. a bad game. He's got nine points, three assists. So Sexton really playing pretty well. They just can't seem to stop Minnesota inside. They do here. Galen Smith, the block, the lob for Hall. And he's going to the free throw line. That's on Murphy. Foul number two on Jordan Murphy. And two shots coming for Dante Hall. Galen Smith has come in and really given Alabama some solid minutes. Weak side there at the block shot. He's given them some toughness. That's something they've been missing in the first half. Herb Jones coming back in, replacing John Petty. 31 seconds to go, so the shot clock remains on. Alabama down 12. If they get a stop here, can't be feeling too bad. Returning for Alabama is the one on the Norris. Herbert Jones. Kenny Jam chimes in. He goes, Murphy, can I be your agent? Kenny, I'll tell you this right now. I want to be a part of that group too. Jordan Murphy has just been an absolute beast. Just give me 1% of everything coming his way. 
Minnesota taking it all down again. Just a one and a half second difference. Shot clock to game clock. Shot clock to five. Mason with three on the shot clock. With two, Mason the bounce and it's a shot clock violation. Reset the clock to 1.5. Sexton will launch from 70 off the mark. Could have been worse for Alabama. It could have been worse. Sexton had some words. He's a little bit frustrated, but they're still in this game. Only down 12. You know, we talked about maybe getting it to 10. Close enough. They did not play good basketball the first 18 minutes of that first half. But the, the last two, I think they started to figure out an offensive rhythm. Sexton was able to get some buckets, find his teammates. You know, Alabama, they're so talented, but they're still young. Minnesota came out and kind of punched them in the mouth, kind of set them back. Avery Johnson did a nice job of mixing and matching his lineup. But the difference in this game has been simple. Jordan Murphy. What an absolute beast. 19 points, 11 rebounds. He's the difference maker so far. Kristen, what do you have for us? Guys, I am here with one big Minnesota fan. Sir, tell everyone at home your name. Oh, Steve Urban, Stillwater, Minnesota. Steve, now you're, you traveled to this tournament from Stillwater. You travel to a lot of games? Actually, myself and one other person that's here in the gym today are the only two living human beings that has been to every NCAA basketball game the Gosser has played since Clem Haskins. That is amazing. Now, now, why is that? What makes it? What makes you want to get to all of those games and keep that streak alive? Well, once you're a Gopher fan, and if you've ever been to Williams Arena, it's an unbelievable place to watch basketball. And uh, two years ago, we were down. It looked like we were going in the wrong direction, but all of a sudden, Patino brought us together, and now we've got a very nice team. And we would have followed them if they were one and 18 or 18 and one. Of all those games that you've been to, which one stands out the most for you? Well, I'll tell you what. One of the games that I think was most interesting, uh, well, actually, is two. But one was uh, playing Middle Tennessee State in the NIT. Uh, in uh, Middle Tennessee State's home court, and everything was blue except for a few gold. And it came down. I mean, it came, it was like a avalanche of blue people. I, and the Gophers won that game, and it was fabulous. The other one was the infamous call by a Southeast. Uh, conference referee against uh, against us back in 1989 with Willie Burton and we would have went to the final four and they called it against us now, Steve I, I've noticed these shirts that's how I spotted you from over there at my perch tell me about these shirts because you and your friends have them on well you know we're playing Alabama and of course everybody knows sweet home Alabama but nobody knows <laughs> sweet home Minnesota so and we have a lot of lakes so we're sweet home Minnesota where the lakes are so blue I love that now let's talk about this game how are you feeling at the half 41 29 well I think we got off to a very good start don't under underestimate Alabama and uh, I think that uh, our kids are playing pretty smart few stupid mistakes but pretty smart so we can continue that the second half there's no question that we can win the game but you know these are young kids these are kids in college uh, sports so they have to keep their mental about it we keep our mental we can win it Steve I think you might have a future as an analyst I just want to point out Steve's friends back here they've all got on the shirts too. love the shirts guys sweet home Minnesota where the lakes are so blue thank you so much Steve uh, we really Really appreciate you taking the time. We're going to send it back to the studio for the top five plays of the week. I'm Tyler Jacobs here in the stadium studios. We'll get you back out for the second half of your game in just a moment. There were some great plays in college basketball this week. Here's a look at the top five. Yeah, that was a big play. Win. System on the floor. Giddy Four Potts one. back in. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Giddy Potts oh. would be the one getting it done. We talked about staying away from deflections. That 1 3 1. They got the tip and Potts with a big finish. Giddy off the bench. Bag in the bucket. Iso for Carter here. Bagley the two handed finish. And a spin move in the dunk. You don't see a lot of ISO plays in college. Pass back from McLean. Tate stole it. Layup blocked. 
Going back to the rim was Khalif Tate and Unique McLean. Just the night of it. Blocked the ball out of bounds. It'll stay with Niagara when we come back. They're trying to get it inside to him, aren't they? Frustration to run the ball. Oh my God. He's seen the ball being taken from him a number of times. He only put it down for two good. Oh my, Kanate is able to meet Ogulu at the rim. My, oh my, Ogulu came soaring in. What a block by Kanate. Stadium is your new national sports network, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com and click where to watch. Stadium, welcome to the game. Now, as we said on Facebook, we don't have commercials even at halftime. Instead, we're bringing you things you want to hear about, and Gophers fans are going to like this one. The new facilities for Minnesota, they've spent about $166 million. They're moving over there in January. Take a look. Well, time is so precious, you know, and, and when you can have one facility where all student athletes can be impacted, I mean, from an efficiency standpoint, they can eat, train, get their academic tutoring, uh, academic training, all in one facility is just phenomenal. So let's talk a little bit about the academic uh, center. What is this space going to do uh, for the academic resources that our student athletes have available to them? You know, well, first off, you know, as, as you know, we're the highest rated school in the country, public school in the country with respect to student athlete academic success. And when you can go from eight tutor rooms to more than 30 tutor rooms, it's going to have an impact, you know, just from a spacing standpoint. And now you can come into this new facility where we can all be together in one location. There's no doubt it's going to have a huge impact. As we're walking through the Nutrition Center, tell me a little bit about how this is going to change the daily lives of student athletes. The cool thing for me is obviously you have a new state of the art facility. A lot of times our teams don't have a chance to hang out with each other. And now we'll have a place where you know, we can hold up to 325 student athletes. And we'll be able to have different interaction between different teams, which we think will be really special and really neat for our students. You know, we have this great urban campus. Uh, you can look out the window here and you can kind of see your future is right across the river there, just a couple of miles away. Without a doubt, this is my favorite part of the tour. Uh, you know, I've had a chance to walk through here many times. And, and when you walk through here with recruits and you can actually see the downtown community, you, you know, in my mind, there's no doubt we're the most aggressive school in the country with respect to what we're doing from a leadership standpoint in our Leadership Excellence Center. You know, with the 18 Fortune 500 companies right here in the metro area, uh, we're not a typical college town. We want to make sure that our student athletes, that again, we prepare them uh, outside the classroom, outside outside the playing fields. We have a degree of care for every individual. You know, you talk about the 80 different majors out of our 750 student athletes. We have student athletes studying a myriad of different opportunities. And when you're at a world-class institution like the University of Minnesota, and we can provide individualized special attention for each student athlete to make sure that we give them the tools necessary to make sure he or she, when they leave this institution, are prepared for the next step. Looking back at this space here, Mark, talk about the progress and how quickly this thing is coming. Uh, this is the ultimate team effort, you know, whether it be our staff, Mortensen, uh, the subcontractors, contractors who are working on this facility. You know, I was here two weeks ago and none of this equipment was here. And now to walk in here and see it come to life, it's just awesome. And it's hard to believe in less than two months our student athletes will be using this facility. Uh, but there's a reason why you're seeing an uptick in our recruiting across all sports. There's a reason why you see people with excitement and energy in our department right now because they see this coming and the impact it's going to have on our program. Those facilities look awesome. Also, while I've been here at the Barclays Center Classic, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Alabama coach Avery Johnson. We talked about a lot of different things, including the draft and one and dones. Take a look. Well, I was excited about it because I think the dialogue between the NBA, the Players Association, the NCAA, that positive dialogue about what we need to do about the one and done rule, I think is a step in the right direction. Uh, I'm all for, you know, kids either coming straight out of high school if they're good enough or staying at least two years in college. I think it'll be, I think the NBA is going to have a better product for those kids that are ready. And then if you come to college, you being able to stay two years, you'll be able to grow and develop a little bit more and coaches will be able to uh, have much more uh, effective scholarship situation, be able to develop 
these kids fundamentally so that the NBA then will get a better product if they can stay in college for at least two years. So you are on the record as saying come straight out of high school or stay two years and that's your stance. Yeah, and the ones that come out of high school, uh, I'm not going to say committee because we got enough committees in this world, <laughs> but they have to be, you know, on the level of a Kobe Bryant or mm -hmm. a Kevin Garnett. A LeBron. It just can't be a LeBron. You can't just have everybody coming out of high school. If you identify one or two kids that are extremely gifted, mm -hmm. that have that type of talent, but for everybody else, I would say stay in college for two years. Mm -hmm. But let the market bear it out. Let them let them take their chances and yeah. see. Yeah. Would you be in favor of the NCAA allowing collegiate players to participate in the NBA G League to show off their skills in the summer? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's something that uh, is up for discussion. But I, that fits into that gray area. Mm -hmm. We don't need any gray area. Let's eliminate all of the gray area. Mm -hmm. uh, so if kids come out um, after two years, I like the idea that once they come out and declare for the draft, uh, if you don't make it, you can come back to school. If, if you don't make it mm -hmm. past that deadline where you can go back to college, but you can only declare twice. But I don't like the gray area of being able to go to the G League after your freshman year or out of high school. Let's eliminate the gray area. Now, you've got a lot of players, especially with this recruiting class, who you know are probably interested in the NBA draft and potentially sooner rather than later. How do you talk to them about whether they should stay in school or declare for the it's draft? It's really simple. Based on all of the research that we gather from all of the NBA folks who know what they're talking about, if you are somewhat guaranteed to be a first-round draft pick, we will help you pack your bags. Mm -hmm. You need to go to the NBA. Uh, if you're a lottery pick, we don't even think twice about it. Uh, I played in the NBA for 16 years, so I would love for as many kids to experience it. Maybe not for six years, it might be three years or nine years, but uh, if you're somebody that's projected to go in the first round, and sometime maybe even in the early second round, especially with the way the guaranteed money's changed, that's something that uh, we would encourage our players to do. Well, I really enjoyed having the chance to sit down with him, and I found a lot of the things he said really interesting, and I would love to hear what both of you think. What about one and done, Tim? Do you like what he said? He said either go right out of high school or stay two years. Yeah, I think that's spot on because the NCAA wants to say that these guys are student athletes. <laughs> So if you have to stay one year in school, you really only have to go to one semester just so you're eligible. So I would actually like to see it stretch to three years. Yeah. That way if the guys choose to go to college, then if they stay for three years, then they're really making an effort to go out there and try to get their degree. Like, for example, Michael Porter Jr. hurt his back from Missouri. Do you think now he's going to focus in on his studies? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, he's not. He's going to get ready for the draft. So um, it's broken right now, and I think that's why the FBI is looking into it. right Because it's not the, the middle of the road, the top 100 guys that maybe are getting extra benefits. It's the top guys. And now that it's starting to get really dirty in college basketball, you can see Adam Silver trying to adjust the rule. Something I believe is going to happen this offseason in college basketball. I, I would agree. I, I think that it needs to be more than one year in college. It shouldn't be a one and done. If you want to go to the NBA, I, I like what, what Avery Johnson said. And I know Richard Pertino, you he asked said him the it, exact same he thing. He said the exact same plan. I think if you're good enough to be drafted, you can come straight out of high school to the NBA. But if not, you go to college, you got to be there at least two years. I'd love it for I'd love for it to be three. I'll take two. Well, whatever it is right now. It's not working, but the sad part is a guy like Colin Sexton, who we get to see on the court today, you know, we may never see that. I, I think the most excitement in college basketball is the one and done guys. Those are the guys that I wanted to see, especially to tip off the year. What are they really like? Can they play at that next level? Now, as the season wears on, I think we like to see outstanding teams like Minnesota, but I believe this offseason there's going to be an adjustment to the rule. That's Tim Doyle. He played his college basketball at Northwestern. Had a year at St. John's in there as well. Kristen Balboni and Chris Hassel, thanks for joining us. It's halftime. Minnesota with a 12-point lead over Alabama. We'll show you how things went down in the first half, and a lot of it had to do with the two-time Big Ten Player of the Week, Jordan Murphy. 19 points, 12 rebounds, two blocks, and a steal. We need to update those points right there because he deserved every single one of them and scored them in a plethora of ways.
just has a relentless motor. He tries to grab every single rebound. And I talked to him yesterday before the game, and I said, well, give me a comparison. What's your game like? Because I can't even describe it myself. Because I can give you a little bit of everything, and he has just done that for the Gophers. And as for Alabama, they got back in the game when Colin Sexton really started to work a little bit from the offensive end, got his teammates involved here, an opportunistic basket. Two Gophers run into each other. You know, Alabama, I, in my eyes, Chris, they could be down 20. The yeah. fact that it's 12, Agreed. you come out, you set a tone, maybe get the first couple of baskets, and now you're right back in it. Avery Johnson's been around the block. They did not play their best basketball still within striking distance. And some people might see the field goal percentage and say, what? I mean, Alabama should be closer than, than 12. Listen, the rebounds have been a major story in this game. Minnesota out-rebounding Alabama 25 to 15. They have 12 offensive rebounds and outscoring Alabama 14 to 2 in second chance points. 14 to 3, beg your pardon, in second chance points. It really has been the difference in this game. And Alabama will have the ball to start the second half and have an opportunity to close it to 10 or maybe even single digits. Here at the Barclays Center Classic presented by Continental Tire. And Brooklyn Hoops. Sexton to Hall, and Hall with the tip again, and they're gonna get over the back, I believe. McBrayer went over the back of Giddens. Giddens had a tough first half. No points, no shot attempts in six minutes. He only had one foul. We have not called John Petty's name a lot. Came into this game averaging over 15 points a game, and the freshman held scoreless in the first half. Turnover. That is turnover number 10 for Alabama. Giddens looks like he's just looking for somebody to hit. I mean, he would be one heck of a tight end. A little bit of a zone here from Alabama. Minnesota passing it quick. Murphy another offensive rebound. Jordan Murphy's eighth offensive rebound of the game results in three more for Nate Mason. Second chance points are now 17 to 3. Sexton alley oop and swatted out of there. I don't know if that counts as a block. I don't think it does because it was a, it wasn't a shot. Mason. Another three. And what a start to the second half for the Golden Gophers. Ingram was a little off balance, but he was able to find Colin Sexton, who finds the range. First three-pointer of the game for Sexton. There's just no energy right now in Alabama for defense. Look at all their arms. Everybody's arms right now are down. You gotta have your hands up. You gotta have some energy, some effort. Coffee carving them up. Didn't get it down, but will get the free throws. Right now, Minnesota's getting any shot they want, and when they miss, they're getting the rebound. Nate Mason's guy last year, their first team all Big Ten, we haven't really talked to him that much. But Matt McCall from UMass thinks he may be the best point guard in the country. That's, I think, what makes this Minnesota team so good, is because they have a guy like that who might be the best point guard in the country, and he's like the second to fourth guy we talk about because you got to talk about Jordan Murphy first. You talk about coffee. You talk about Reggie Lynch in the blocks. Now, coffee's defense has really been outstanding today against John Petty. And we talked about Petty not really being active. It's coffee in his length. There it is, challenging a shot. I think they need more of that. Don't you? Don't don't they? Just guys rising up, shooting the three. I think that's the only way they win this game. Well, I just talked about his defense, and obviously 
Doesn't make me look too smart. He buries the shot there, but he got caught on a screen. Coffey's done a great job of really taking Petty out of this game in any sort of offensive rhythm. Maybe this gets the freshman going. A little close, tipped out of bounds, and denied the entry pass to Reggie Lynch. I thought Amir Coffey falls asleep. Here's a, just a little down screen, back screen, and it can't give him any room. John Petty made 10 threes in a game earlier this year against Alabama A&M. Got it in the foul. Mason with eight points already in the second half. His second, second on the team. Mason at the line, one shot. I think that was a foul, partner? Yo, clap, stop, People man. behind us don't. Watch the line, I would say no, but I always err on the side of no. We appreciate Drew watching. He's watching this game in Egypt right now. Thanks, Drew. We appreciate you chiming in on Facebook. Use the hashtag Min versus Bama. Giddens. Oh, the follow from Hall. That was nasty. Coffee quickly the other way, and he draws the foul. Ingram had to reach in and rip him down. Dante Hall can really get up there. And great extension. We saw him just dominate BYU, blocking shots. His physicality, I thought, was the difference yesterday as Alabama took care of BYU. If you weren't with us earlier, a dramatic comeback for the Cougars. In the first game of this afternoon slate, as they were down nine, my partner said the down dagger. Ten. Down ten. You called the dagger in a I game, did it. and then the team I lost. I said it might be the dagger. You said dagger, and then that team lost. Will you ever do that again? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, UMass was leading by double digits for much of that game, and BYU came roaring back. Get a last second win. Alabama's down 14. They turn it over again. Hey, Alabama's young. I mean, it's a really young team. Minnesota has some young players, but for the most part, a lot more experienced than Bama. Get two thirds of their scoring from freshmen are the Crimson Tide. Washington for three. And a timeout. Avery Johnson. I thought that was number 11. It was number one. Dupree McBrayer. I should have known that the, the cheer would have been louder if it was Washington. As you see, Rick Patino in attendance. The biggest Golden Gopher fan there is nowadays. Kristen. We have asked everyone to send in their pictures using that hashtag you just mentioned, men versus Bama, to show how they are watching their football teams and their basketball teams in this game. And I like this setup right here. This is a good one. The trifecta, it says. This is also a nice one, too. They could get the fire going is, is kind of what I think, but just make it complete. Oh, okay, here we go. We got a projector, big screen, and a dog. It doesn't get much better than that. Oh, someone's already got their Christmas tree up. I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, that is so sweet. Yeah, got a Minnesota fan there holding it down. Oh, and that is nice right there. Cartoons. Not what I would have thought the double screen would be used yeah, for, but right? I like it just as much. <laughs> I actually know what cartoon that is, because I have two kids. It's Paw Patrol. It's my son, Joe, was Marshall, and uh, I watch way too much of that. <laughs> and guys, Bama fans will know this, but it's 26-14 Auburn in the fourth. Keep those pictures coming. Thank you, Kristen. You see the hashtag. Swipe right to get rid of those comments, folks. If you're just joining us on Facebook, swipe right gets rid of everything. You just see the whole picture. Been a good day for Reggie Lynch and Minnesota to this point. Lynch, three blocks, leads the nation in blocks, averaging over five a game. She's
Jeez, Tim, you okay? Tim had a little headset issue. Tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with Alabama. I think this crowd wants to see more of Isaiah Washington, but hard to get anybody else out of the game when Nate Mason's playing so, so, so well in the second half. Washington, a local New York City kid, had the crowd going crazy in the first half. Up on their feet. Reggie Lynch called for that foul. Minnesota foul called against number 22, Reggie Lynch. His first. Just number one on Reggie Lynch. He's really done a great job working on not committing silly fouls to get him in foul trouble. That might be the key to having a chance against this Minnesota team. Get him in foul trouble. Make him go to the bench. He's played more minutes than anyone in this game as Reggie Lynch. Fifteen point lead for Minnesota. In our matchup of top 25 unbeaten teams here at the Barclays Center Classic presented by Continental Tire. We got a question here from Tyler. Do you think the Gophers will be ranked in the top 10 if they win this game? Absolutely. Where you from? They would have three wins this week. And one over a top 25 Alabama team, but Tide not out of it yet. Still hanging around that zone where if, if they make a run, they're right in it. Down 13 with 15 and a half to play. Yeah, Daddy, keep talking back there. Murphy off the dribble, the dish, got it poked away, and it's an offensive foul. And they, Tim, they say, you know, the best teams talk a lot on the court. <laughs> I think these guys behind us must have, uh, must have been a part of a good team. They're talking a lot. Maybe they're getting ready for the concert coming up tomorrow, Kristen. That's right. We got to clear out of here quickly because right after this game is over, the rigging crew is going to come in here and start setting up. Everything's got to be broken down by 3 a.m. for them because, as you said, Jay-Z performs here. He's got two shows coming up. He's got two shows coming up. And, guys, what Jay-Z wants, Jay-Z gets. So 3 a.m., this place is going to look completely different tomorrow. And, uh, Tim, Chris, I've heard they're a little short-staffed, so they were wondering if you two would maybe help out breaking down the court tonight what do you say if i can go to the concert i would have to be in vip because i'm a then you'll stay. i didn't hear then anything about vip you just want me to be a, a normal civilian no i'm not, not going to break down the court then you give me a vip i think about it and i get to meet jay-z and beyonce then i'm in let's I, I, make this a little juicier i still wouldn't do it i still wouldn't do it i'm, I'm wondering here. if I'm i can i'm wondering if i could just stay here somewhere unnoticed and stick around for the, for the concert. What do you think? If someone gave me free tickets, I might think about that. Oh, here we go. Th that's why you're from Iowa, Chris, all right? I grew up in New York City, all right? Hard Knock Life, that was all I listened to for all years. That, that you're just showing that you're from Iowa right now. A New York City kid, Jay-Z. The thing about him is he retired, and that's the new thing now. You retire to unretire. Yeah, how do you, I mean, if you retire, aren't you just done I think rapping you, for good? I think it would be great for your career if you retire. Like, after this game, just say <laughs> retire. And you know what you could say? That's Hassel's dagger. <laughs> and He's then unretire. Chris Hassel is back. Nobody retired more than Hulk Hogan. He's still wrestling. Alabama down 13 with the ball. Coming up on 15 minutes to play in this game. And Avery Johnson can coach his youngsters back into this game. Petty a three, no good, but the tip in. They give that to Galen Smith. Galen Smith's given some really strong minutes. The first half, he had three points, three blocks, three rebounds. He's given them some good strength on the inside. See the defensive intensity ratcheting up a little bit now. 
Mason for three after he shook a dude. Ingram in no man's land. Petty inside the dish to Galen. And Galen Smith will go to the free throw line for two. Well, nothing is better than when you're in New York City and you're able to shake somebody. Watch Nate Mason here, and then he looks at him. Oh, yeah. That was Sexton. Oh, boy. Oh, baby. That's somewhere when you go up to Harlem, you go up to New York City, you get on the playgrounds here in Brooklyn, and you're able to shake somebody like that. That's the type of stuff people remember, and they want to go out there and see you play. Here, watch Sexton get tied up. He looks at him. <laughs> That is filthy. And you know these players are aware of the, the crowd here witnessing this game. You can tell some of these folks sitting behind us love this style of basketball. This guy with the ball, the freshman from Harlem, is as exciting as it gets. Nate Mason says, hey, I could be exciting too. Oh, Mason is shimmying and shaking. And Everything in between and a little bit too much of it. Watch Sexton. His feet get tied up right there. And then Mason, watch. Oh, we got a technical foul, I believe. A double technical. Going on Mason and Sexton. Uh-oh. A lot of talking. And Mason better be careful or else he's going to get another one. Richard Pertino wants a timeout. Mason is real juiced up by this crowd over here. And I believe as well, someone just got tossed. And Nate Mason just got tossed here. Richard Pertino's irate. A referee's trying to get control of this game. Nate Mason started talking to the Alabama bench. And Richard Pertino is another one. Out. This game is getting real interesting. Two technicals on Nate Mason, he's gone, and Richard Pitino picks up a technical foul of his own. I was blocked from the first technical. Nate Mason, you know, we just showed him eye and down Sexton. And this is the is. first one. But Colin Sexton's supposed to be a lottery pick. Nate Mason is a guy, and you said this before, Chris, maybe he doesn't get the respect on a national level. Even on this team, you talk about Murphy and you talk about Lynch, and then finally you get to Nate Mason. He's having a big half. He starts talking to Colin Sexton. There's the original T. And then I watch kind of him go back to the bench a little bit before this, and he was John at Alabama, John at their coaches. He gets the second T, and then you see Richard Pitino just fly off the handle. Oh boy, you got a double digit lead, you're cruising, you're playing outstanding basketball. As a senior, Nate Mason, he's gotta be smarter than that. And there's Rick Pitino, not liking what he's seeing right now from Minnesota. And his son's team. The announcement now that Mason's been ejected from the game and the fans don't like it. Gonna be a bunch of free throws now for Colin Sexton. Oh, write the score down. 57-44, buddy boy. Let's see how this changes the complexion of the game. What happened? We had the shimmy from Nate Mason. Sexton hit the deck. Mason hit the shot. Next time down, better defense from Alabama. Mason was trying to do something. He turned it over, so Sexton probably said, hey, I got you that time. Double technical. And then the problem is Mason just kept going. Mason just kept going at the freshman Sexton from afar. And we saw the officials. Brian O'Connell was looking and just waiting. And if he kept it going, which he did, he was going to team up a second time. I don't think the officials were right on top of it. Nate Mason crossed the line. He got a T. He's got to be smarter than that. Now he's gone. And now you can see the momentum potentially swing 
in this game. Kristen, what do you have for us? Yeah, I just saw Nate Mason walk off, and you could tell that he is very upset. A couple of fans had their hands out trying to encourage him, and he just went straight back, guys. I'm also seeing some comments, and there people are saying, Mason is a senior. He should know better than that. You got to keep your cool, is what a lot of people are saying on Facebook right now. Three out of four from Colin Sexton. Remember, had, had everything just stopped at the double technical, there would have been no free throws. Two free throws came from the second technical on Mason and then two more from the technical on Richard Pitino. And now Alabama's got the ball and they're only down 10. Still a lot of time left in this game. Ingram gets cut off, loses his dribble. Sexton's got it. You know he's gonna wanna make something happen. One of the best freshmen in the country. Double team, finds the senior, Riley Norris. It's a seven point game. And we've got fisticuffs. A scuffle underneath, and players ready to throw. We have madness at the Barclays Center Classic between Alabama and Minnesota. Amir Coffey is being ushered off the court. I think what we have here, Tim Doyle, is these young players getting a little too caught up in the fans' courtside watching this game and wanting a little too much playground action. That's my take. You could feel the hostility in the building right now, and you're going to see Norris bury the three here and watch underneath. That's Dazon Ingram tangled up with, looks like Dupree McBrayer. Hard to catch the numbers from that wide shot. We saw some Alabama players step on the floor. That's an immediate technical. Well, the entire team is out there on the court. Every single player without warm-ups on is on the court for Alabama. Uh, that's going to be a messy situation for officials. You know, we've seen this at the NBA level. You step on the floor, you're gone. Let's watch that bench reaction. I mean, there's Hall. Dante Hall's out there. Avery Johnson Jr.'s out there, but he's trying to hold players back. Your point before about getting caught up. You know, I grew up in New York City, and this may be hard for you to understand if you're in Minnesota or in Alabama. You go out to the playgrounds, you get that crowd in there. This It's so hard to explain. And a guy like Nate Mason, he got caught up in the moment. He's gone. Two technicals. Richard Pitino, you see him getting caught up. And now it's starting to overflow onto the players. The crowd is heavily involved in this game. These are two top 25 teams. This is the best game in college basketball in all the land right now. And both these teams obviously really want it, but it's hard to explain when you're in New York, tensions are running high, meaningful game. It all started with Nate Mason and Colin Sexton. And now it's overflowed to everybody else on the court. Dazon Ingram got into it with Dupree McBrayer. And then John Petty, the freshman, came over and he looked like he was ready to throw with McBrayer. Now, I'm not sure there was ever any swing out there, and that, that would be important. That doesn't mean that multiple players aren't going to be given a technical or rejected in this game. But I haven't seen anything on replay that shows anybody swinging. You know, the comments are coming across right now on Facebook. It's going to be interesting what they do as Daryl and Wade and Ryan all chiming in right now. What are they going to do with the Bama bench? And you step off on the floor. And there, they're celebrating. And you got walk-ons. You watch Hall. You can't be on the court like that and leave the bench. Now, Hall leaves the bench. I mean, he's inside the three-point line right now. It was close down there. There were a couple guys that had the hands up and were flinging. I don't know if you could call anything a, a punch. You can't leave the bench, though, Chris. Right. That's a, that's a whole other issue. 
And that's why this officiating crew of Rick Crawford, Brian O'Connell, and Brett Smith have a lot to sort out. Remember, already two technicals on Nate Mason. He's ejected. Already one technical on Richard Pitino. In a game that's all of a sudden close, that Minnesota has controlled throughout. Led by as many as 18 points in this game. The referees are now looking for this shot, which we're showing you, of the Alabama bench. And we have several players starting to run out. Dante Hall is one of them. Avery Johnson is out on the floor, but he's holding everybody back, Avery Johnson Jr. After that, though, when things started to escalate a little bit more, then more players come off the bench. They all came off the bench at one point, like right here. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of technical fouls handed out. We just had Colin Sexton take four consecutive technical foul free throws. Well, I would expect someone on Minnesota is going to be shooting a lot of free throws right now. I think the Alabama coaching staff should have done a better job of getting out in front of their guys there, preventing them from running on the floor. I wouldn't be surprised to see six, eight, Ten free throw shot right here from Minnesota. And as a player, I played in the Big East, I played in the Big Ten. You know you cannot leave the bench. But this playground-like atmosphere that's been created here, it's been awesome with the fans getting involved. But the players on the court, the players off the court, got caught up, caught up in the emotion. This is not a playground game. This is a two teams in the top 25 trying to go out and get a win that's going to resonate in March. And just utter chaos broke out. And I think it even surprised the Alabama coaching staff because they did a poor job of getting to their players, preventing them from getting on the floor. Security ran on the floor. And I've been part of a lot of games at the college level as a broadcaster playing. And I've never seen anything like that. It's Rick Crawford speaking with Richard Pitino, who doesn't seem too upset. Brian O'Connell and Brett Smith are speaking with Avery Johnson. We'll get an explanation from these officials in just a moment. Well, Minnesota is jumping around now. They're all fired up over there on the bench. I think they may have gotten word that they're going to benefit from this. And again, we're going to get an explanation. We're going to pass it along to you. And the officials will come over and let us know what has been decided, what has been sorted out. Avery Johnson, Richard Pertino with the three officials near midcourt meeting right now. If you're just joining us, Minnesota's got a seven-point lead. The lead was 13 moments ago when Nate Mason got teed up twice, ejected. Richard Pertino got teed up. Colin Sexton hit four, three of four free throws, and then Riley Norris hit a three. Seven-point game. And now the explanation from one of the officials as several players have been ejected from this game for Alabama. The entire bench from Alabama has been ejected from this game for entering the playing court. The bench is empty. Just assistance. And now the five on the court for Alabama are the five who have to go the rest of the way. Minnesota's entire bench is intact. Washington lays it in, and Minnesota's up nine. Tim, I have never seen anything like this in all my years of watching basketball at any level. I'm surprised there was no free throws. Sexton to the hoop. Too strong. Minnesota trying to seize control. Amir Coffey's got it. Avery Johnson's got to call a timeout here and settle down his team. Ingram bumped. So Dante Hall, a starter, is gone. 
Another starter, Colin Sexton, still in there, along with starter John Petty. Galen Smith is still out there, but Herbert Jones is out. Avery Johnson Jr., out. Daniel Giddens, out. Alex Reese, out. All that's left, Norris, Smith, Ingram, Petty, and Sexton for Avery Johnson. In what has to be an extremely embarrassing moment for the third-year head coach. Think about this. Ingram has four fouls. Great point. They may have to play this game with four players. Coffee. No good. Rebound to Smith. Still a lot of time left as Sexton scores. It's still a nine-point game. How are you playing this game if you're Avery Johnson? How, how are you approaching the rest of this game with five players? McBrayer short. Sexton runs it down. And there's a foul. That's Norris's third. Now, now you got to really pay attention to the foul. I mean, check out this bench right now. And again, if you're just joining us, the entire Alabama bench has been ejected from this game because during a scuffle on the court, everyone on that bench entered the playing court. When you enter the playing court and you're on the bench during a play, you're automatically ejected, even if you didn't do anything. So the five that were on the court for Alabama are the only five that are going to get to play the rest of the way. Washington trying to put the moves on Sexton. Washington, no. And a foul on the floor. And that's it. That is number five. Number five on Ingram. And Alabama only has four players left. I've never seen this before in the history of college basketball. Avery Johnson is standing at midcourt. He cannot believe it. This is the under-12 timeout. It's a 61-52 lead for Minnesota. And Avery Johnson is now left with four players the rest of the way. In one of the most bizarre turn of events we've ever seen in major sports. Kristen Balboni, the third member of our team, has had a courtside seat for this whole shebang. Guys, it's, it's nothing like I have ever seen before, as both of you said, and certainly the commenters on Facebook. We got a couple of questions that we thought you could answer to help some of the commenters out. They want to know, first and foremost, what happens now? Tim? Well, you play with four. Uh, th th there's no if, ends, or buts. Th this is it. And the next question that everyone is asking is, why did Minnesota not shoot foul shots? Do we have, did we get any clarification from the referees on that? That's a big question on Facebook right now. It is an interesting question, and I think it's a different kind of technical. When someone is given a technical foul for leaving the bench, the referees want to look at the last play as well, we're being told. The last play as Washington took it in on Sexton. And I think they're going to review to see... if there was contact underneath. They're trying to make sure the foul was called on the right player, and it was. They have decided the foul goes on Dazon Ingram. So he's disqualified with his fifth personal foul. Reggie Lynch, one and one. One and one coming for Reggie Lynch. So here's a laundry list of the players who Alabama doesn't have. Dante Hall, Alex Reese, Daniel Giddens, Avery Johnson Jr., Herb Jones, now Dazon Ingram, and Lawson Schaefer, who was on the bench. Foul 
on Minnesota. Sexton. Look at some free throws. There's already been a technical foul called on Colin Sexton in this game. So if he gets a second, he's done. Yeah, they'll have three players. Four players on the court for Alabama. I guess if you have on the playground an overmatched team going up against a team that is a little bit better, maybe you go the odd men, four on five. Is, is there any kind of game planning that you can do as a four-man team against five? No. I mean, I mean, what kind of defense do you play? Well, you got to sit in a 2-2 zone. I mean, there's just no other choice. We talked about Ingram having those four fouls. What would happen? Worst case scenario, we're talking a minute and a half later. After everybody gets ejected, he picks up his fifth. If you're just joining us right now, this all started when Nate Mason and Colin Sexton started going head to head. Nate Mason had a big start to the second half. Started making some jumpers early. Then looked down at Sexton after making a shot. He got teed up. And now the fans are getting involved. The coaches are getting involved. And right now a fan has been asked to be escorted out of the arena. Security is on the court speaking with the officials and they are going to kick at least one fan out of the arena. These fans have been heavily involved in this game vocally from the get go. And that really got some of these players juiced up. And, I, and in, in my opinion, that's one of the main things that has led to the craziness of this game. Mason being ejected originally on the double technical. Richard Pitino got teed up after. And then after the three from Riley Norris. Couple players going at it inside. Dume Dupree McBrayer from Minnesota and Dazon Ingram for Alabama. And while that scuffle was taking place, every player on the Alabama bench entered the court. You know, it's all started to escalate right here. Nate Mason, senior guard, watch this move. But he looks at Sexton right there and then buries the three. You talk about a playground move. Big time shot. Nate Mason last year, first team all Big Ten. But what did that do? Well, that incited Sexton. And they started John back and forth. And then Nate Mason gets teed up. And then he gets teed up again. And then Richard Pitino gets teed up. And partner, how soon after that was the brawl? I think it was the very next play. Norris makes the three. And just chaos erupts. So everybody leaves the bench for Alabama. They're playing with four players the remaining 1130 of this game just craziness so everyone on the bench was kicked off was sent into the locker room because if you leave the bench it's an automatic ejection that's why there's no free throws it's not a technical it's an automatic ejection then Alabama loses another player on Dazon Ingram's foul out so he's the only one sitting on the bench and that's why they have four players on the court Still a nine-point game here, but I, I can't imagine any way Alabama with four players is going to be able to make a comeback in this game. But they still have Colin Sexton. Amir Coffey is coming. He throws it down! Might see a lot of that the rest of the way with an odd man rush for Minnesota. Petty, no good on the three, and he's hurt. Petty is grabbing the foot. Alabama's playing with four players and now down to three as Fitzgerald lays it in and Petty is in agony. I am at a loss of words. Grabbing the right foot. He's in a ton of pain. And we'll see, he elevates on that three. And he's gonna come down right 
on Fitzgerald's foot. Just when you think, what else could go wrong? Just a really bad ankle turn. And you can't put any pressure on that right foot. Alabama is going to be down to three players, folks. And now the question is, if you're if you're Avery Johnson, do you keep going with three? So Avery, stop me in. I wish I had an 13. I wish I had an answer for you. I really don't know what to say. Avery, stop me in. I'm ready. Looks like they will. things I've ever seen at a sporting event I never thought I would say this Alabama is playing three on five against Minnesota and they're just gonna double everything Galen Smith are they gonna get Washington here in a hold of Sexton you know I, in practice I've seen seven on five to maybe simulate a press I've seen six on five and different things to kind of show you how athletic teams could be. But I've never been on the offensive end or the defensive end with three players. And I'm sure Avery Johnson, who has 40 plus years basketball experience, has never been in a situation like this. And I've never seen anything like it. It's three on five, a two-man advantage for Minnesota. There is a hockey rink underneath this arena. This is where the Islanders play. You see it in hockey. You've never seen it in basketball. Jameer Harris for three. And this game's all but decided now. Three on five. He'll double-team Sexton as he comes across the timeline. I mean, you might see this in someone's front yard when you have three high school guys playing against maybe four or five younger children. Sexton a three. No. Another three. Too strong. Norris tips the rebound to himself. Sexton looks gassed right now. Now he's going to be facing the double team for the next nine plus minutes of this game. You realize there's a lot of people tuning in, not even fans of Alabama and Minnesota that may have heard about what's transpired here at the Barclays Center. Alabama is playing with three players because their entire bench was ejected for coming onto the court during an altercation. Alabama had another player, Dazon Ingram, foul out. That cut him down to four. And John Petty just rolled his ankle and can no longer go. That is why Alabama is down to three players. Riley Norris, Colin Sexton, and Galen Smith. As many players as our broadcast crew. Three, Kristen Balboni. It's just unlike anything we've ever seen before. I'm monitoring the comments. Vicky says, been watching basketball a long time, and I have never seen anything like this. Jerry says, nobody looks good at this point. Minnesota isn't going to get credit for beating up a team five on three. A lot of people are saying, you know, they've never seen anything like this. In Minnesota, all they're doing is taking threes. Take a snapshot of this, folks. You may never see it again. The three on five major college basketball game between two ranked teams, two teams that were undefeated entering the game. Sexton able to get it to go. It's a 10 point game. see what Richard Pitino decides to do. He has been okay with them shooting threes. Washington takes a deuce. Appreciate you joining us here on Facebook Live for the, the craziness. 
with Tim Doyle. I'm Chris Hassel. Barclays Center Classic presented by Continental Tire. Fourth and final game of this Barclays Center Classic. Coffee scores. I think Avery's going to call this game. I think they may wave the white flag here. No, he's asking his three players to take a seat. But look at Colin Sexton. Look at him. He is gassed. He says, basically, his body language says, I, I, I can't go anymore, Coach. I mean, it's only been about four minutes since they went to four players, and now at three players, it feels like an eternity. I think that there's 744 left in this game. When all this went down, you see a smile from Sexton. He knows it's... It's never happened before, and it's probably not going to ever happen again. It was just a seven-point game when all this happened, and Alabama had all the momentum. Nate Mason had just been ejected for a second technical foul. Colin Sexton hit three free throws, and then Riley Norris hit a three to cut it from 13 to seven in a blink. They got the momentum. And then everybody on the bench forgets that you can't leave the bench during an altercation. Kristen? Yeah, guys, I just want to point out, as we see on the screen right here, Avery Johnson drawing up plays for his three players. This is, it's just unlike anything we've ever seen before. And as you guys pointed out, 7.44 left in this game. We'll show everybody everything that went down a little while ago here in this game that has turned this into a circus in just a little bit. So stick around if you're just joining us here on Facebook. We'll bring all of it to you. And Alabama forced to play the rest of the game with three players. So now Minnesota's just turning up the defense. They can take every chance they want. Sexton to the hoop. That was that wasn't three on five. That was one on five. 12 point game. Minnesota's been content to toss it around and just take jump shots as Alabama packs it in. Another three from Jameer Harris. I asked you, what do you do on defense when it's five on four? You said all you can do is a 2-2 zone. So when it's five on three, I guess it's a 1-2. Yeah, you just go out there and play a triangle and just <laughs> hope they miss. Alabama's shown a lot of grit, a lot of toughness. I'm surprised Avery Johnson hasn't thrown the towel. But I've never seen anything like this. Somebody's going to write a book about this someday. And Avery Johnson's going to tell us exactly why he decided to keep going. And maybe he's going to point to this and say, hey, you guys that got ejected, you put these guys in this situation. They finished it off. They carried you, so you carry them the rest of the season. Maybe they can use this as a positive. But certainly, this is going to be tough to talk about as Sexton hits the three. Sexton. Colin Sexton, one of the best players in all college basketball. People saying a lock lottery pick. I agree with them. He's out there trying to carry his two teammates. Look at the hustle from Colin Sexton. Three on five, and he comes up with the steal. He has nothing left. Completely gassed, hands on hips. Can't even run. You gotta Norris. go double the ball. Norris scores again. It's still just a 10 point game with five and a half to play. This is wild. This is just target practice for the Gophers. Harris is just taking advantage of it. He's just gonna step into another three. The three players left on the court for Alabama, the three players that are still eligible to play Colin Sexton, Riley Norris. 
and Galen Smith. Two freshmen and a senior. Sexton still hustling. Overshadowed in this game is Jordan Murphy, the forward for the Gophers, had 19 points and 12 rebounds at the half. He hasn't done anything in the second half. There's the Harlem kid, Isaiah Washington. He's had a big game himself. Had a big stretch there in the first half. To help Minnesota lead by as many as 19. Sexton's got it back. Triple team. Norris picks up the dribble. Eight on the shot clock. Sexton's going to try to make something happen. Shoots it. And hits! It's a three! This is amazing. The fact that when Alabama was only down seven when this happened, and now they're only down nine, is incredible. It's five on three, and Minnesota can't escape. The three is no good. The tip is loose and Riley Norris has it. Norris gets it poked, tries to save it. And a foul. It's double bonus and it's an under four timeout. This game impossibly isn't over yet. And for those of you who didn't catch it, and those of you who want to see it all again, this is how we got to this point of a five on three. And Nate Mason, the senior guard from Minnesota, you see the shake and bake and then the stare at Colin Sexton and then they started jawing. But the officials right there, you see the technical, that was the first one. And then as Mason was going back to the bench, he started jawing with players, coaches, Richard Pitino gets a technical, and this is where chaos erupts. All the players on Alabama's bench, they leave, they come on the floor. No punches are thrown, but the referees are left with no other choice. But everybody from the bench, they get the heave ho. So Everyone. Alabama, they're left with only five players. Ingram then picks up his fifth foul. Right there, he's gone. So now you're down to four players, and then it seemed like a possession later, John Petty, their sensational freshman, he turns his ankle. So Avery Johnson, who's played at the highest level, who's coached at the highest level, and is now coaching a top 25 team in Alabama, they're looking for a resume win, and they're playing with three players on the basketball floor, something I've never seen before in the history of basketball. Seven players ejected. Now, each team can continue to play if, if you can't court a team of seven, uh, five, if you will. Other team members not eligible or able to play. That's the article two from rule three of the NCAA rule book. Each team may continue to play with fewer than five players. That's the bullet point. When there's only one player for a participating team, that team shall forfeit unless the referee believes that both teams have an opportunity to win. Never thought we'd have to go to that rule. And never thought this game would still be in the balance with 3.48 to play. Eight point lead. And now the Gophers you know, work the clock down a little bit. Let's see, Richard Pitino has been okay with his players just pulling up, taking threes, taking long twos because they're all open. Alabama just has to pack it in with that triangle. Washington hits the jumper. Washington. Colin Sexton totally gassed. He has 33 points in this game on 10 of 18 shooting. Sexton for three. Got it! What an amazing performance from the freshman Colin Sexton out of Mableton, Georgia. Since Alabama went to three players, they've outscored Minnesota. Washington misses, and a foul going on Minnesota. 
243 to play and it's a seven point game and this entire crowd now outside of minnesota fans are cheering on alabama i don't even know what to tell richard patino to do you never practice five on three First free throw is good from Galen Smith, who didn't even play in the game yesterday. Riley Norris, who's one of the other three players still left, he didn't play in any of the first three games for Alabama this season. It is a five-point game with Minnesota playing five on three against Alabama. For a while, we thought Alabama would just forfeit. They are right there. And he stepped out of bounds. Alabama has it. Down five. Sexton gets a screen. He's got Trying to get Norris and Smith out of there. Too strong on the three. If that would have went down, this whole place would have come down. 36 points for Colin Sexton. Two minutes to play in this game. Alabama's outscoring Minnesota 24 to 16 with three players. Sexton the rebound, here he comes. Sexton himself got it! It's a one possession game! This place is up for grabs. Sexton the rebound! Missed the shot with 115 to play. That Cut it to one. Coffee and the foul. Minnesota back up five with 112 to play. This is one of the more courageous performances I have seen in the history of sports. Three players. And not even the three players that you would choose to be on the court if you're Avery Johnson. He calls a timeout. Down six, 105 to play. Win or lose, and it probably will be lose. This is going to go down. As one of the all-time gut checks. In college basketball history. You know, I said around the seven minute mark, I thought he'd wave the white flag. I thought he'd throw the towel. Hey, let's attack number 42. He can't move his feet at all. Let's listen to Avery Johnson talking to his three players. That's what I'm saying. I said, get this at the Yeah. It's over with. Yes. Listen, this is the possession right here. Come on. to play Minnesota with an 86-80 lead on Alabama. A matchup of two unbeaten teams here at the Barclays Center Classic presented by Progressive Tire. Continental Tire. Wow. It's been that kind of night. Sexton 
Down six, three on five. Dish is off, it's a dunk. He should be fouling here. 12 second different shot clock to game clock. If you don't foul, there's not gonna be enough time left out for. I'm surprised they're not gonna extend the game, but the more possessions, obviously, the better the situation is for the Gophers. What an outstanding, unbelievable effort from Alabama in this game. Avery Johnson wanted his players to avoid fouling, and that was too late. With five seconds on the shot clock, Dupree McBrayer will go to the free throw line, up four, with 17.8 to play. For those of you watching us, this is Stadium's coverage of college basketball exclusively on Facebook. We'll have 40-plus games this season in college basketball. None will be as unique, bizarre, and circus-like as this one. Minnesota is going to survive. But what a performance by Alabama as the entire bench gets ejected. They actually outscore the Golden Gophers three on five. Colin Sexton going to the line with a chance to reach 40 points. Sitting on 38. Ten seconds left. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of ovation these fans are going to give these three players for Alabama. A foul, Michael Hurt will go to the line. Avery Johnson giving his three players a hand. The entire bench was ejected for entering the court during a scuffle. And I realize I keep repeating myself, but it's because we have so many people who are just tuning in because they've heard about what's going on. The whole bench came onto the court, so the whole bench was ejected. Alabama was left with five players on the court. The problem is one of them already had four fouls. That was Dazon Ingram. He fouled out, and then John Petty injured himself, rolled his ankle. That's why they finished the game with three. Point eight left. And free throws coming. Colin Sexton's gonna be remembered for his heart of a lion in this game. He single-handedly kept Alabama in this ball game. He was getting oxygen on the bench. He was huffing and puffing. Stadium is your new national news and sports network. We focus on the sports at Stadium, folks. The only 24-7 network available on both television and digital services without a cable subscription. 40 points for Colin Sexton. And he has his hands raised. The three players for Alabama are coming together at midcourt. Minnesota gets the 89-84 win. But in the end, everyone's going to be talking about what these three Alabama players did in the closing moments of this game to keep it a game. Down by double digits, playing three on five. They came back, and Colin Sexton actually had a shot to cut it to one. They had the ball down three in the final minute. Yeah, he shot a pull-up jump shot there. I'm sure in hindsight, down three, he would have liked to jacked up a three-pointer just to see if he could tie this game. What a wild set of events. Emotions were high. The crowd was into the game. And this really started with Nate Mason and Colin Sexton going head-to-head. -head. Mason, a reigning All-Big Ten player. Kristen Balboni on the court. Coach, you told me just a second ago, you said, I don't even know what to say. A game unlike any of us have ever seen before. Take us through how you handled it from the ejections to down to three players. What did you tell your team? 
Uh, stay calm. Um, you know, I mean, Colin Sexton, he, he could beat a single team, just one guy on himself. He's that good. Uh, I mean, obviously, that was just absurd, uh, just the whole experience. We were shooting these weird twos that we're not comfortable shooting. But, uh, you know, to their defense, I haven't worked on an offense against three players. Uh, so give Sexton a lot of credit. They're a really good team. Uh, we just had to get out of there with a the win. I saw you give love to Sexton and the three players and Avery Johnson. You got to admire their effort, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, Riley's a veteran. He's a good player. He's healthy now. Uh, Avery does a great job. That, that's a team that's going to make some noise in the SEC. We were playing really good until it got wacky. Uh, so that's taken away from a little bit. But I'm really proud of what we did until it got a little crazy there. Did you think that you would finish this game when it went to three on five? Did you think that you would finish out this game? I had no idea how to think. I was hoping they'd forfeit or something. Um, but they they, they, they they did a good job, and we just won. That's all that was important. Now, this was a matchup between two top 25 teams. Got really wacky, as you said, but it was a win for you guys. How do you assess this when you guys go back and look at everything? Well, when it was five on five, we were playing good basketball and really good until the ejections and everything. We showed toughness. We were really, really good for about 30 minutes or so. Thanks so much, Coach. What a what an incredible experience. All right, back to you guys. Kristen, great job. Great questions. I mean, what... The, the toughest part about all this being commentators is when something like this happens it's almost hard to figure out what you can even possibly say and you got the sense that Richard Pertino as a head coach had no idea what to do as a head coach in that situation and you could just see tensions were brewing in this game the crowd was getting involved and it all started on one particular play here it is watch Nate Macy he crosses up Colin Sexton right there looks at him drains the jump shot and then that opened up a whole box of worms that they started drawing there's the first technical and then as mason's going to the bench he gets tossed he started cursing out alabama players then richard patino gets a tee and this is where all chaos erupts so he's on ingram got into it with dupree mcbrayer some shoving and then the players who left the bench well they all got ejected see you later Alabama went down to five players and then a couple of possessions later Ingram picks up his fifth foul so you go from five players to four there's the fifth foul and then the next possession John Petty their freshman sensation bam he turns his ankle he was in excruciating pain and now down to three and I thought at that point Chris Avery Johnson who's been around basketball a long time I thought he would throw in the towel they were down double digits and there was still a lot of time left almost 11 minutes when petty injured his ankle and it was clear he was not going to be able to come back he couldn't put any pressure on that right foot they outscored minnesota with three players they only had three players for the remaining seven plus minutes of this game and they outscored the gophers and had a chance to tie the game they made it a one possession game colin sexton was outrageous in this game he had 40 points thought alabama showed a lot of heart, a lot of determination. I think that coaching staff could have done a better job of keeping their players on the bench, but things escalated so quick here from the Mason to the ejections to the fight and then down to three players. What an effort, though, from Alabama. And, you know, what gets lost in all this is Jordan Murphy goes out there. He has 19 mm. points, 12 rebounds in the first half, and we're talking about Minnesota being a Final Four team, and instead it turns it, into what Richard Pacino totally describes, a, a wacky game when all is said and done tonight and when this game shows up on all the major national sports outlets they're not going to be talking about minnesota winning this game a game of top 25 teams they're going to be talking about what happened with alabama and then how alabama's three players responded i think it's safe to say we may never see that ever again in the history of college basketball a team finishing the game with three players now you got 10 plus scholarship players with walk-ons teams are fielding teams of 15 guys and to be stuck at three players was remarkable and the fact that Alabama went on and kept on fighting is what we will remember most from this game overshadowing two top 25 teams folks this was the best game in all of college basketball you could watch it only here on stadium only here on Facebook and to have it go down like that you know growing up in New York City it's hard to explain when the crowd can get into a game and the crowd here was up. They were passionate. They were loud. 
they got the players to start playing at a, a, a level where, you know, emotions were high and the blood started to boil a little bit. It became a little bit of a playground-like atmosphere, and then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. It's a good way to put it, because all hell did break loose. Um, Colin Sexton had 40 points in this game, and I think when he's drafted next year, uh, this is going to be one of the first things that they reference. You're growing up in this area, right? They always like to point out one thing that's going to make you special, make you endearing to the crowd. And growing up in Brooklyn, especially a blue-collar area like it is, to have a guy like Sexton go out there, put his team on his back here, and the whole respect of this arena, which may have been split, but once Alabama went to three players, I felt like if you weren't wearing the gopher colors, you started pulling for Alabama just as a fan of sports because they were facing really against all the odds. But what a wild one this was in Brooklyn. And lost in all this is the fact that Minnesota actually had a player ejected as well. Nate Mason got this whole thing going when he was given two quick technical fouls. Alabama cut the lead to seven. And then the whole bench came on the court and got ejected. In the end, it was three on five. Alabama certainly made their fans proud at the end of this game, but falling short to Minnesota. Thanks for watching here on Stadium.